And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the best games in existence is Settlers of Catan. Now, I don't like it as much as I used to, although I still think it's an extremely good game, but it's amazing how many people have just been brought into gaming with just this wonderful game. And so, whenever there's a good game, naturally there comes to be expansions after it. Seafarers of Catan was a good expansion. It only added a few things and really made the game just tremendously better, in my opinion. Uh, kind of evened out the resources and allowed you to do some exploring. Cities and Knights added almost a little bit too much complexity and certainly increased the length of the game. But between those two expansions, there was a lot for the basic game. A few other small expansions were released in magazines over the years, but there wasn't anything major, even though the games come out quite a bit ago, until now, uh, the next big expansion, which is Catan, Traders and Builders. But this expansion is really my favorite kind of expansion, in a sense, because it adds just so much. But you don't have to use all of it. You can just use whatever you want. In this book here, the rule book, there's a whole bunch of different variants that you can use. And so I'm briefly just going to talk about several of the things that the game adds, or this expansion adds, and why I think, really, this is an essential expansion for the game. If you play Settlers of Catan a lot and looking for something more, this is great. It's basically, in my opinion, made Cities and Knights obsolete. I won't use that expansion much at all. And Seafarers, while good, this expansion is better than Seafarers. Okay, let's talk about a few things. First of all, the robber. The evil robber who shows up in games, you know. Now, there's a variant you can use, a friendly robber, where basically you can't use him to attack someone who has two or fewer victory points. Simple variant. Eh, why not use it? It doesn't matter to me. The Catan event cards. Now, these were sold separately, and I've already reviewed them in a separate review. But just briefly, they're included in this game if you didn't miss, you know, if you missed them before. And you can use these instead of rolling the dice... Basically, you turn it over, and for example, if you turn over this card here, you've rolled a six. But there's also an event here which says each player gives the player to his left one resource of the giver's choice. There's also some events here for uh, playing with cities and knights, but then there's also nothing happens. Basically, the settler's labor, Catan prospers, but it's still as if you rolled a three on the dice. This is good for people who don't like a lot of luck in their game. You know, for me, the reactions mix. Some people love rolling dice. Other people who get irritated when they put a, a settlement next to a five but don't get it the whole game, they, they wish that they could, you know, get that five. And then, of course, you could always just totally ignore the numbers in the corner and just draw one to see what event you get. A, a decent expansion. It will spice up the game a little bit, but, you know, nothing, nothing major. The next variant is the Harbor Master. Now, this is a very small thing. It adds the Harbor Master card to the game. There already is the longest road, and the most knights give you two victory points. Here's another way to get two victory points, by having the most harbor points. Whenever you build a city or settlement next to a harbor, you get one point for a settlement, two points for a city, and the first person to get three gets this card. After that, if you get more harbor points than anyone else, then you get this card, and again, it's worth two victory points. This is nice. I like this because the harbors already are kind of not as good positions as the inside of the board. And this, this forces people, or not forces them, but gives them an incentive to build outward. This is almost a staple in the games I play with. Then the next part of this expansion, something I've already gotten before uh, from a magazine, but to me it added a lot to the game. It was really, it was really, really fun, and I'm glad they included it here, is the Fisherman of Catan. You put this hex here in the middle of the board in place of the desert hex and then you'll be placing these pieces around the outside of the board so let's see here I have my outside of the board and the piece just fits on like this from the fishermen of Catan and so then if you have a town that's built here or a settlement that's built here whenever a six is rolled in this case or is this a nine oh, I'm sorry a nine is rolled then you get a fish token you randomly pull from a pool of tiles, and then it shows you get one, two, or three fish, or every once in a while, a boot. And these fish, then, can be used for different things. They can be used to buy cars. They can be used to take resources or steal resources from other people. I really like these because, again, it makes those outside positions that much greater. So now the inside positions are powerful. The outside positions are, are powerful. And even putting them around here, getting those fish can really make a big difference. If you add the Harbor Master and the Fisherman to, a, to the game, that really just, to me, makes everything useful, everything important, and spreading out is just, to me, a lot more fun. 
both of these are, in my opinion, the best parts of the set. But there's more. There's the Great River of Catan. Here's one of the two pieces that you'll put in the middle of the board. And there's a river. And as players are building settlements next to the river, they get these coins. Little coins that they get. And whoever has the most coins is the wealthiest settler, which gives them plus one point. Whoever has the fewest coins gets the poor settler piece, which is negative two points. Players also get bridges that they can build across the river. And you get more coins by building bridges across the river. And again, you get more points by building next to the river. Other than that, the river is not going to do much for you. So by putting a settlement next to it, you're kind of stifling your production, but it's making you wealthier, which could possibly give you points. Or worse, if you totally ignore it, then you'll be the poor settler and have minus two points. It's okay. It's good for a lark. I like using the Great River, but nothing that I want to use in all my games. Then there's the caravans. This is probably the, to me, the... It's a little convoluted, I think, but basically you're taking these little golden camels. Oh, shocking. Camels in a Euro game. And you're placing them in caravans around the board. And there's kind of like an auction and bidding with resources to put them down. And I don't know, that kind of feels a little out of place in a Settlers of Catan game. But if you manage to get cities between different caravans, um, or if a road is on a caravan, you get bonuses. The cities and settlements are worth more points or it discounts. Caravans help you have more sway in who gets the longest road card. I don't know. I, it, it was okay, but again, that's something I would do if I was really bored. Nothing I would want to add to most games. Then there's the Barbarian Attack, and you have these little golden barbarians who are attacking you, but fortunately, you have knights of your color, which are going to come back and fight the barbarians for you. Okay, it's not as exciting as all that. Um, different parts of the game, the barbarians will be coming on, and moving across and coming on the board, and you'll be using your knights to fight them. That sounds a little bit like cities and knights, and this is where I think, while this scenario I don't think is great, it's okay. Fighting off the barbarians is a nice you know, way to use resources and make sure you do it to keep them from getting you. But it certainly is simpler and better, I think, than the whole cities and knights. And this is the ex part of the expansion, I think, that makes cities and knights kind of obsolete. Or even more so, the name of this scenario is actually called Traitors and Barbarians, and then the final scenario included in the book is Traitors and Barbarians, and not only are the barbarians in the game, but there's a few other hexes that are put in the game, and if you notice, you can build roads in the middle of these hexes, like this, and get resources and deliver them to other places. This kind of takes Settlers of Catan from being a simple game to a much more convoluted game, because you're fighting off barbarians, you're moving your wagon around the board, you're you're getting special resources, and, and it, I hardly ever play it, actually, to be honest, because Settlers of Catan, I like it as a simple, fun trading game, and this kind of takes it to a level that, I don't know, if I'm looking for that kind of strategy level, I'd rather pick a different game to play total, but still, it does add some, you know, there's different cards that are added, a whole, whole deck of cards, and, you know, if, if you're looking for a more complex version of the game, I think this does a better job than Cities and Knights did. So, my overall impression is, is really high. I mean, there's tons of stuff that comes in this box. New hexes, um, tiles, the fish stuff, piles of golden camels and golden barbarians, coins, little tiles for uses of the scenarios, decks of cards, the, the deck of event cards, the decks of cards for the barbarians scenario. There's just a lot in this box. And having all these different variants, even the two-player variant, which I think is totally unnecessary. Get Settlers of Catan, the card game. But even all these variants allow you really to take the game and just play over and over and over again. And so if you're someone who plays Settlers of Catan a lot or quite a bit and, you, and you're wanting more in your plays, you're wanting more to, things to do, then this expansion is a must-buy for you. Really, an exceptional product for Mayfair, Traders and Barbarians. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.